What the fuck? Hello friends, today I tried to finish Resident Evil 5 with only Sheva's AI. If you didn't watch part 1 yet, go watch it. This time, it was up to Sheva to protect not one, but two little idiots while I sat there doing absolutely nothing. Of course, that wasn't anything new, but I'd be lying if I said that didn't get me feeling a little emasculated. Josh didn't have any doubts though, he had total faith that his life was in good hands. I predicted he wouldn't stay alive more than 30 seconds. But then, something amazing happened. It had completely slipped my mind that Josh was also an AI. Although his time with us was short, I cherished every second of it. That is, until we got to the exit. There we were, finished with the job and ready to go when all of a sudden, the chainsaw guy came out of nowhere and started making his way over to us. I was begging Josh to speed it up. There was no way in hell I was becoming human salami and I let him know I'd use him as a meat shield if I had to. I was hoping this would put some pep in his step, you know? But all it seemed to do was stress him out. He was now making mistakes, backspacing that shit and was all around less confident in his skills. The chainsaw sound was getting closer and closer, yet Josh didn't seem any closer to getting us out of there. After giving him a firm slap on the ass, the door finally opened and- Oh! Oh, Jesus Christ! He was cut in half right in front of us, and all we could do was leave him behind. This was all Wesker's fault. If it wasn't for him, Josh never would have died. From then on, Sheva and I promised each other we would not stop until Wesker was dead. The next thing we knew, we were expected to make our way to a getaway boat before the timer went off. A mission that seemed simple enough at first, but one that would ultimately kick my ass. I charged into every trip mine on the way to the boat without fail. The shrapnel in my lungs didn't feel great, but it was a price I was willing to pay. After making it to the boat, Sheva and I were gifted with a blessing. The stun rod. I know this may seem like a downgrade from a gun, but trust me, it was actually a huge improvement. We then caught up to Irving, and this time, I had a lot of faith in my partner. I knew Sheva wouldn't let me down. Wow. Wow, her aim was straight trash. Oh no, you can't do that either, can you? Because you're a fucking moron. But as bad as she was at aiming, Sheva didn't give up. Her determination was unmatched, and as bullet after bullet went through Little Fish Boy's body, he finally collapsed. We had won, and I didn't even have to lift a damn finger. Our journey was far from over, though. We still had a massive uncontacted tribe to wipe out. Luckily, these people were the perfect test subjects for Sheva to try out her new toy. But before getting a little further into this adventure, let me tell you about Manscaped, the sponsor of today's video and their new Ultra Smooth Kit that just released. This new kit is basically a shaving set for body hair. It comes with three products, the Crop Exfoliator, the Crop Gel, and a shaver, plus you get five replacement blades. You can see here that when you open the package up, everything is right there for you, ready to go, and they even give you a step-by-step -step guide in case you're not sure what some of the bottles are for. The shaver even comes in a little storage case so you can travel with it easily. But the best part of the package is definitely the little crop shaver. You can see how small it is compared to my hand, so it's not as difficult for you to reach those awkward angles. And just a bonus for you, all of these products are vegan and free of sulfates and parabens, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Overall, the shaving kit was a nice surprise and I'm happy to have it. Also, don't forget about the performance package 4.0 that comes with a waterproof razor, an ear and nose hair trimmer, body deodorants, all that kind of stuff. If you'd like to support me while also getting yourself a nice little shaving kit, click the link in the top of the description or my pinned comment down below and use code DANTE20 to get 20 percent off plus free international shipping. Or to make it really simple, you can go to manscaped.com slash Dante. That's manscaped.com slash Dante. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now, the stun rod was an incredible weapon. Anybody would be blessed to have the opportunity to use something like it. So, it was odd to me how pathetic my partner was. She was getting her ass handed to her left and right. Unfortunately, as bad as I felt, I wasn't able to help her. All I could do was pray she'd be able to do everything herself from here on out, including beating Wesker. After making our way through a good portion of the temple, I started to notice that things weren't looking so good. In fact, things were looking horrible. The local population ganged up on little Sheva, and I was a little worried I was about to see something horrible happen, but luckily my partner was able to defend herself. In fact, it was kind of mind-blowing how good she was with that stun rod. We were up against well-built men who had trained their entire lives to kill, little spiders that had the strength to easily crush human bones, and rolling balls of death whose entire existence relied on them squishing intruders, and my adorable little partner got past each and every one of these trials without even breaking a sweat. At this point, you might be wondering how we got by the next part with the deadly sunbeams and the mass of men. Well, we just ran. Sheva had her strengths, but fighting eight-foot men wasn't one of them. We collected all the plates, opened the door, and got out of there. That was the last we'd ever see of the tribe's people. I was a little upset we weren't able to wipe out the entire tribe, but you don't get everything you want in life. Getting through the lab wasn't that difficult. I'll admit, I was a little nervous about all the liquors, but apparently that wasn't even an issue. So after busting through the door and alerting the entire building to our presence, 
once, I sent Chev out to deal with the horde of demons all by herself. I thought this whole ordeal would be her chance to finally prove to me just how strong she had gotten, but after killing only a single liquor, Sheva retreated. I didn't understand what was happening and I didn't know what to do. When I turned back and saw what Sheva was doing at that moment, I immediately lost all respect for her. So, being the good mentor I am, I sent her back out to fight the demons while I sat back and waited for the elevator to open. Unsurprisingly, she wasn't doing so well and we were a few seconds away from being slaughtered. It was at that moment I went from being an atheist to becoming a full-blown religious maniac. And as if my prayers had been heard, the elevator doors swung open. I immediately pushed my way inside and was ready to go, but Cheva's brain started malfunctioning again. It was then we came to a part I really wasn't looking forward to. The U8 fight. At first glance, you'd think Sheva would be able to kill this thing easily, right? <laughs> Wrong! Trying to get through this section really tested my patience. I mean, it was like watching my 90-year-old grandmother try to turn on a computer for the first time. Sheva was just so slow. Look at this! Pew! 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 Shoot! Shoot! By the grace of God, Sheva was somehow able to do enough damage to the guy for me to finish him off. The U8 was similar to the bat situation where I personally had to do the killing blow. An unfortunate turn of events, but one that couldn't be avoided. That's when we arrived at the final frontier. The guys with guns. Go! Roger. I didn't know how my brain dead partner would react to these guys. Would she sit there and act like a bullet sponge, or would she take the initiative and wipe these guys out? Well, I'll let you take a look for yourself. She was an absolute monster. That is, until we got to the bug part. For some reason, Sheva absolutely refused to shoot these things. She went from being an unstoppable badass to a pathetic coward. All I could do was run away screaming. But even that became a problem because the disgusting pieces of trash on the conveyor belt kept trying to take me down with them. Luckily, a single swift kick to the ribcage was enough to get them to piss off. But that didn't mean I suddenly forgave Sheva for her cowardice. If anything, her helping me made me more angry. We somehow made it to the end of the room and got out of there. It was now time to fight Ouroboros. And unsurprisingly, that was the time all 32 brain cells in Sheva's tiny brain started short-circuiting. Her aim was garbage. She apparently forgot how to dodge, and worst of all, she had no idea how to refill the flamethrower. Nothing seemed to be going right. I was panicking. Micromanaging this, collecting that, it was as if I was playing 40 chess. Everything fell into chaos, but I refused to give up. I hadn't come that far just to quit when things got tough. So I pulled out the blueprints and started thinking, what was the best course of action? What was I missing? And then it hit me. I had to play this as if I were Sheva. No running around myself collecting things, no entrusting our fates to an idiotic AI, no. What I ended up doing was send Sheva in with the flamethrower while hoping to god she didn't get the shit kicked out of her, I'd tell her to drop the weapon, I'd go refill it, and then finally, I'd send her in again and the cycle continued. This whole process was extremely tricky and tedious with lots of fails along the way, but it was the only thing that worked. In fact, I didn't even need to give the guy a final blow. Sheva was able to finish him off herself. <laughs> oh no, that didn't sound right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know why some bosses needed to randomly be finished off by me while others didn't, but whatever. Job well done. You'd think by this point we'd be running low on ammo, especially since we wasted everything on the bat boss earlier, right? <laughs> Wrong! We were fully stocked. We even had a rocket launcher. Everything was going well and I was optimistic about the future. Unfortunately, the next section would throw not one, but two bug guys at us, plus a whole platoon of zombie guys. Sheva was strong, but she wasn't that strong, so we ran. You see, there was a platform across the room that took about a minute to move from one side to the other, so Sheva and I had no choice but to play Ring Around the Rosie of Death until the platform made its way over to us. Somehow, we were lucky enough to survive until that happened, but unfortunately, I got cornered by a bug and was instant killed. Starting that whole section over again after doing so well killed my soul, but it was the price I was gonna have to pay if I ever wanted to shove my stun rod up Wesker's ass. As I loaded back in to try again, I noticed something odd. The platform was already there waiting for us, and not only that, all the enemies had despawned too. I didn't know what to make of it, so I just assumed it was a Christmas miracle. So yeah, after getting past a few more guys, it was time to go on the Ferris Wheel of Doom. Now, to get past this part and continue through the game, you need to shoot the guys across from you who are controlling the levers. But for some reason, Sheva wasn't able to take these guys out. The guys beside him were no problem, but the lever guy himself? No, no, he was off limits. Giving her a rifle also didn't seem to help at all. <sighs> 
There was nothing else I could do. We were now only one room away from battling Wesker. All we had to do was get through the liquor room. Now, normally one person would go to the top to push the container while the other provided supporting fire, but of course all I could do was sit there watching Sheva do her thing. And as it turned out, I never actually needed to help her in the first place. Alright. Then, we finally arrived at the fight I had been looking forward to since the moment I had stepped foot into Africa. Wesker gave Sheva and I a warm welcome as he sicked his slave girl on us, and I gotta say, I was a little jealous of him. Not only was Jill super hot, she also listened to every command he gave her without question. That was a luxury I didn't have, which made me hate Wesker all the more. Anyway, there's two ways to get out of this horrible situation. To beat Wesker in a fist fight, or to spend seven minutes running away from the guy. Since Sheva clearly didn't have the capacity to beat this man in a 1v1, I chose the run around like an idiot strategy. Now, I don't know why, but for some reason, Sheva was really obsessed with restraining Jill. Her moans could be heard all throughout the temple, which wasn't a horrible thing to listen to, but it made it really difficult to know what direction Wesker was coming from. After dishing out some unnecessary abuse and running around a bit, Wesker threw in the towel. Next up was our battle with Jill, and really there wasn't much to talk about. All I'll say is I definitely did not enjoy any of this at all. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Jill was saved and I realized now was my chance. I begged her to replace Sheva on my journey since she was an upgrade in every way, but unfortunately, all that throwing and abuse had broken some of her ribs and she could barely walk. Damn it! Apparently Sheva was smarter than I gave her credit for. We were now on the final chapter, the final stretch. The ship deck itself wasn't anything too crazy. I did have to end up shooting a few buttons here and there, but other than that, everything was pretty chill. At least until we got to the machine gun guy. This man was brutal, taking shots to the face like it was nothing. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little intimidating. Luckily, Sheva's AI understood this guy pretty well, so she tried her best to avoid his gunfire when she could. I mean hell, she was basically neoing his bullets at a certain point. 70 shotgun shells lay Later, and the guy was finally defeated. He took a little more ammo than I was expecting, but Sheva got the job done, and besides, we had tons of ammo to spare. Then, we came to the true test of Sheva's skill, the huge Ouroboros fight. To be blunt, I had absolutely no faith of winning coming into this fight. It just seemed too much for Sheva to handle. Time and time again, we would burst our way into the arena only to be brutally squashed by the Wumbo-sized Peapod. Sheva just didn't seem to understand how the satellite gun worked. But you know what? I gave her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she just needed more time. Maybe she was on the cusp of a breakthrough. So we tried one more time, and she crushed it. I was so proud. As we made our way deeper and deeper into the ship, I started to feel a little worried. Soon, we'd be coming up against two bugs, two machine gun guys, and a whole flock of ship crew. As much as I trusted my partner in crime to do well, I knew that that part would be pushing the limits of our AI to the max. All I could do at that point was pray as we entered hell. Now, I'm just gonna get this out of the way right away. You all know by now that Sheva cannot and will not shoot at the bugs. She'll always choose to run away from them instead. Okay, so what about the machine gun guys? Well, as I showed you all before, Sheva can actually take these guys out, and technically they're the only ones we need to defeat in this room to progress. This would be difficult on its own, but throw two invincible bugs into the mixture and this part was just straight up impossible. I tried this room over and over again with no success. Death after death and I was getting nowhere. I got so fed up I even gave Sheva our only rocket launcher to use, but guess what? She wouldn't use it. What was the point of having something if my idiot partner was too stupid to use it? I had enough, so I did something blasphemous. I gave Sheva an infinite ammo sniper rifle and killed the bugs myself. And you know what happened? She annihilated everyone and everything. A comment in my last video pointed out how effective the AI was with the sniper rifle, and by golly, they weren't lying. We snagged at the key cards, slipped into the final room, and there he was, Albert Wesker, the man who had gotten Josh killed. I could tell Sheva really wanted to kick the shit out of him, and I didn't stop her. In fact, I joined in as we straight up bullied that man. The torture we put him through must have been unbearable. But unfortunately, taking his lunch money wouldn't be enough. We needed something with a little more oomph. Something that would kill Wesker on the spot. And that's when it came to me. We'd stab him with the used needle I had on me. It was perfect. But first, we had to weaken him. And the only way to do that would be to shoot him with a rocket. Sheva. Oh, so now you want to use a rocket, huh? But but not before? Anyway, shooting a rocket at him was all well and good, but it was pointless if we couldn't shoot it in his hands to explode it. And because Sheva refused to shoot him in time, it wasn't looking good. 
so I decided it was time to pull out the infinite rifle. I'd already committed that grave sin in the last room, so really, who cared at this point? I'm not over-exaggerating when I say Sheva went to town on this man. Shot after shot went into him, and at a certain point, he couldn't take it anymore. I held him back as Sheva injected him with the used needle. There must have been some leftover heroin in that needle because Wesker started going batshit insane. But the needle also must have turned him into a coward because he was out of there. We hitched a ride on his private jet, and only after it was in the sky, learned it was headed for a volcano, so yeah, that turned out to be a not-so-great decision. The end was coming near, and I was sweating. Would Sheva be able to protect us? Could she really beat Wesker in a 1v1? I didn't know the answer, but I refused to give up. I hadn't verbally abused and tormented Sheva this whole time for nothing. We began our descent into the volcano. I should have killed you years ago. Chris. Your mistake. That seemed to really piss Wesker off though, and he started chasing me. I was a bit scared at first, but taking a short jog around the volcano was enough to get him to piss off. Of course, I was relieved, but Sheva wasn't. She was next on Wesker's hit list, and that was a problem because I wasn't able to protect her. It was over. Sheva knew this and tried to shoot the guy a few times, but it didn't matter. She was dead either way. As the rock bridge collapsed under her, all I could do was watch as Wesker annihilated her. As I sat there waiting for Sheva to be plunged into the lava, something happened. In the last second before Wesker was able to shoot her down, she pulled herself back up and made her way over to me. My god, how? Apparently, shooting with that rifle was enough to delay him from making it to her in time, but it was far too early to celebrate. Wesker was fuming, and the only cure for his rage would be our dead bodies hanging over his mantle. It was the final fight. This man. I knew he'd be a lot for little Sheva, but I had faith in her. After spending so much time together in this little pocket of Africa, exterminating the local tribes, spreading chaos throughout the region, and beating up my old partner, I knew she could handle this. Wesker tried his best to close the distance on us, but Sheva would not let that happen. All I could do was sit back in awe as Sheva completely wiped the table with him. And that was that. Wesker was dead. So, was Sheva able to completely power through Resident Evil 5 all by herself? No, but I was really surprised at how little I actually had to do. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to me and click that bell. If you don't click that bell, you pretty well aren't subscribed to me, so make sure to click that bell. Thanks for watching, check out all my other Resident Evil videos, and I'll see you thick boys in my next video.